right? And so uh, today you have Josh and Brittany Dyer, campus pastor in, in uh, Bangkok. Lynn and Amber Fegley, campus pastor in Brussels. You have Witt and Brittany Common, who, who, who all these are vocational missionaries. This is what we call vocation. They raise their support. They're there on the field, and they're vocational. That's what they do all day is, is they go out, and, 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 and they're, they're sharing the gospel in, in, in different domains and different worlds. That's what they do. You're no different. You go into your job. You go into to, 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 to whatever domain God has created you to go into. Now, here's what I want you to understand. God is not in heaven right now looking down at Life Point going, wow, the Dyers, look at the Dyers Life Point. They're in Bangkok. Look, look at the Commons. Look at, look at uh, you know, the Laws. Look at, uh, look at the Fegleys. They're in Brussels. Look at those guys. They're the standard I want from you. They're balling. They're doing it right. What's wrong with the rest of you? That's not what God's doing. God's not doing that at all. When you get to heaven, if you go to heaven, if you're redeemed, when you get there, here's what you need to understand. God is not going to celebrate the missionary more than he's going to celebrate the mechanic. That's not going to happen. Here's who God's going to celebrate. Well done, good and faithful servant. It's those who live on mission in whatever domain he has called you to go into. If you're a musician and you're a part of a band, if you're a cop, if you're a banker, if you're uh, uh, in a medical profession and you go into that domain and, man, you live as a mission, God is well done, good. There's no different than packing up and moving out. It's living for the glory of God in the domain that he has given you. So th th this is why we challenge you to go. This is why we challenge you to go. Not just over there, but right here. And, and listen, it's not about, it's not over there versus here. I say that because I, I hear that so much because, you know, we're very missional, and that's what we're known for. And people say, well, why are you going to go over there when there's so many lost people right here? I hear that all the time. And I say that, you know, with a facetious voice because it's whiny when people say that generally, right? I mean, why are we going to go over there when there's so many lost right here? And, 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 and I understand that. I, I, I do. I understand the question. But let me help you to understand why we go over there. First and foremost, because God said so, and we're going to do what God said, okay? He said to go, and so I... I Call me crazy, but I'm going to do what God said, all right? So he said go. When he said in, in, in Acts 1-8, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. He, there's a progression. Many people can look at that and say, okay, let's win Jerusalem first. This, let, let's, win, let's win Middle Tennessee first. Then let's branch out to Tennessee. Then let's branch out to America. Then let's go. No, that, that, Jesus is talking about simultaneity. He's not talking about one and then another. All at once. That's, what, that's the wording here. It's you go to Jerusalem, you go to Samaria, Judea, all over the world at once, continuously, con uh, simultaneously. Make disciples of all nations. And so we got to go because he told us to. But let me help you to understand on a practical level. We live in the United States of America, awesome country. There are hundreds of thousands of churches in the United States of America. Hundreds of thousands of churches. You know what? There are hundreds of thousands of people who work in those churches. I'm one of them, Right? But when you've got hundreds of thousands of churches in America, and you've got hundreds of thousands of people that work in those churches, and then you add the Christians in America, here's what we know. There's about, in America, there's, there's about one Christian for every seven people. One Christian for every seven people in America-ish. All right? So when you hear that, and I'm going to tell you that America is less than 15% true believers. When you hear that, it's like, oh, Wow man, we are way the minority, and it's like sad and all that. But to be honest, when I say there's one for every seven, I get a little bit excited because I'm thinking one for seven. If every Christian then would win one person to Christ in the next five years, the, everybody'd be Christians. Isn't that cool? So it's all in how you look at it, isn't it? So in America, there's one per seven, one Christian per seven people based on less than 15%. I think if, if, my, if, if any of the math I'm telling you is wrong today, blame it on Nathaniel because I, I, I went over the math with him. He's our administrator, our finance guy. So I hope it's right because if that's wrong, dude, I'm starting to worry about our finances then. Uh, but uh, uh, so uh, there's about one per seven here in America. Now, let me help you to understand in the unreached people groups of the world, Han Chinese, Yada than India, Isan Tha and Thailand, the Berbers, the Nubians of Egypt. Unreached people groups all over the world, there's one Christian for several hundred thousand people. One Christian for several hundred thousand. In America, one per seven. Around the world, one per several hundred thousand. So you tell me why we should go. 
You tell me, I mean, the, the, did you realize that 85% of all Bibles are printed in English? Only 9% of the people in the world speak English. This is a huge, crazy imbalance. We need to change that. We need to see to it that that changes. And one church can't totally turn the tide, but I'll promise you this. One church doing its part can ignite a revolution and can ignite a movement that literally can change can change the world, folks. That's why we don't want more missionary members. We want more missionaries. We don't need, I should say, more members. We need more missionaries because one church we can't turn the tide that's huge but listen we can start a movement there's a hundred I, I got on uh, did some research this week hundred million people in America claim to be evangelical Christian now I'm, I'm gonna be honest you know what I like about that I thought it was a lot more and you're thinking hold on a minute why would you like about that because let's be real. I mean, people claim to be Christian, right, that went to Mamaw's church five years ago. I'm Christian. So that's only, that's less than 30% of the people because there's about three, 330 million, 350 million people in America, right, I think, ish. It's always ish because it changes, right? So 330, 350 million. So if 100 million of them claim to be evangelical Christian, now I'm going to be very generous, and I'm just going to tell you today that at most there's 50 million, okay? At most there's 50 million because still half of those, at, at, at most half of those, I mean at, at least half of those 100 million are, are people who went to grandma's church for, for Easter or, you know, mama was a Christian, mama's a Christian, and, you know, your mom and them are Christians, and that's a southern thing. And so we're all Christians and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so, so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be very generous and say there's 50 million Christians in America, okay? Now, which represents less than 15% of the population, okay? So, so if 50 million Christians in America, if out of those 50 million, 100,000 said, I'm out of here. I'm packing up, selling out, moving over. I'm going to a different culture. I'm going to live in a different culture. I'm going, to, I'm going to go and I'm going to learn a different language and I'm going to share Jesus with an unreached people group. If 100,000 of the 50 million, which represents, listen, one-fifth of 1%, one that's only one-fifth of 1% one of people who are Christians in America would go, let me tell you what that would do. That would double, more than double, the number of cross-cultural missionaries in our world. That would more than double. Now, can you imagine if all of a sudden the mission force that was on the field more than double? Can you imagine the possibilities? Can you imagine what could happen? If one-fifth of 1%, now, if it's one-fifth of 1%, what does that leave? 99.8% of all other Christians. 99.8. That means 99.8% of all of us. We, we didn't sell out, pack up, quit our jobs and move. We simply said, hey, I'm going to go into the school tomorrow. I'm going to go into my job in the police uh, force. I'm going to go into my job in the band. I'm going to go into my job as a, an accountant. I'm going to go into the medical profession. I'm going to live in my domain. I'm going to be a college student. And my objective there is to live sent. My objective is there is to make God's name famous, to make sure that he, I'm redeemed, I know him, to make him known, to make sure that he is exalted among the nations, he is exalted on the earth. If 99.8 did that, folks, let me tell you something. There would be a movement like you've never seen before for the kingdom of God. That's what we're calling you to do. That's why we must be ascending church. That's why you've got to live sin if you're a believer. That's why we need more missionaries, not more members, not just more members.